This video will discuss the Gibbs energy of ions in solution. So if we imagine we have the following type of electrochemical cell over at our anode on the left where the oxidation occurs, we have tin solid going to tin two plus aqueous cations. So producing two electrons, which are then going to flow over to our cathode on the right where the reduction occurs. We have aqueous uh, hydrogen protons so H plus cations getting reduced to form H2 gas where we have an inert platinum electrode over there at our cathode. All right, so the net chemical reaction here is going to be tin solid plus two H plus yields tin two plus plus H2 gas. So we know from the Nernst equation that the standard Gibbs energy of this reaction is equal to the negative number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times the standard EMF of the cell. We know the standard EMF of the cell is equal to the standard reduction potential of our cathode at the right where reduction occurs minus the standard reduction potential at the left of our anode where the oxidation occurs, hence the minus sign, which equals, well, this is the standard hydrogen electrode on the left, so that's 0.0, .0 volts minus and the standard reduction potential of reducing tin 2 plus to tin solid is minus 0 0.136 volts. All right, so our delta G naught of reaction is going to equal minus, uh, there are two net, two net electrons that flow during this reaction, minus two times Faraday's constant 96,485 coulombs per mole, times the standard EMF of the reaction which is plus 0 0.136 volts, which is one joule per coulomb. So that gives me a standard Gibbs energy of reaction of negative 26.2 kilojoules per mole. So we know that we can also compute the standard Gibbs energy of reaction from the standard Gibbs energy of formation of all the uh, species in the chemical reaction. So in this case, that would be the standard Gibbs energy of uh, standard Gibbs energy of reaction equals the Gibbs energy of formation of H2 gas plus the Gibbs energy of formation of tin 2 plus aqueous cations minus the Gibbs energy of formation of solid tin minus 2 times the Gibbs energy of formation of hydrogen plus aqueous cations. Well, H2 gas is the standard state for the hydrogen element, so that is defined as zero for the Gibbs energy of formation. The standard state of tin metal is solid, so that is defined as zero as well. So what we're only left with here is we have the Gibbs energy of formation of aqueous tin ions minus two times the aqueous, uh, the Gibbs energy of formation of aqueous hydrogen cations. So this is going to leave us with a, somewhat of a conundrum because any electrochemical cell for which we do this and we only have ions in a result for our Gibbs energy of formation, we could, if we knew one of them, we could solve all of the others. But if we don't have a reference for what the Gibbs energy of formation of any ion is, then we're stuck and we really can't get any of them. So to get around this problem, what chemists have done is to just punt on H plus and say that we're going to define the standard Gibbs energy of formation of, of hydrogen cations to be zero. So this is just zero by definition. So we're setting this one equal to zero. Thus the standard formation uh, uh, Gibbs energy of aqueous tin two plus ions by the setup that we have here is equal to our standard Gibbs energy of reaction which is thus going to be equal to minus 26.2 kilojoules per mole. So through the setup of this reaction, through measuring the standard EMF and then going through the stoichiometry, we can then show that the standard Gibbs energy of formation of aqueous tin two plus cations is equal to minus 26.2 kilojoules per mole.